Today we are talking about sugar-free foods. Are they really sugar-free? Can you trust them? What do you need to look for? We're going to talk all about that today. Okay, so let's get started. Now, basically, sugar-free can be a scam. Just like any other thing, you have to know what you're looking for. So, I'm going to tell you, sugar-free can sometimes be good. But sometimes it's a deception. So here's how they do it. So when you look at the nutrition label, I hope you already know by now if you have watched our previous videos, which is already almost 150 or more right now. But if you didn't know already, I'll explain to you briefly that the label, the product label, the nutrition label that you're looking at, you have to look for total carbohydrates why as we discuss in my ultimate diabetes book in detail we talk about total carbohydrates and how they get converted into sugar so those sugars are the carbohydrates turn into sugar the glucose and the glucose is absorbed in your intestines so pretty much every carbohydrate goes and becomes sugar minus minus the fibers so you also have to look for a fiber content at least look for three to four grams of fiber in anything you buy to make sure these fibers somewhat offset the effect of carbohydrates and slow the absorption of the carbohydrates so you may see a label that says sugar free or sugar less than zero grams but you may have up to 50 grams of carbohydrates per serving. You have to be very careful, especially when it comes to cereals and grains. There are a lot of diabetics out there who will tell me that they are eating sugar-free cereal and they don't understand why their blood sugar is going up to 300 after they eat that. I'm like, hey, how many carbohydrates do you have in that sugar-free cereal? They're like, I don't know. Uh, well, you should know. You should know how much total carbohydrates you're getting from that because that again gets converted to the sugar like we talked. Another thing that you have to really pay attention is that they replace a lot of sugar with sugar alcohols. They generally end with the OL. So any ingredient that ends with OL more than likely is a sugar alcohol. Now, sugar alcohols are not necessarily carbohydrate-free either, so they actually can increase your blood sugar, but also they are hard to digest, so you may have a lot of indigestion after eating those goodies that taste good when you're eating, but then a couple hours later, you may find yourself in the bathroom screaming. Well, that's not necessarily the great world, right? The greatest world. So, think about that as well. And also remember to do the math guys so you know nobody wants to count get carbs but think about this even if you have zero grams of sugar and then there is say 15 grams of carbs you're like eh, you know that's not bad really 15 grams but then in your brain if you think that oh yeah that's sugar free it's all right you know and then you end up eating five of them now how much carbohydrates did you have now 75 grams of carbohydrates you just ingested because you thought it's not a big deal there's no sugar in there but as we talked, all these little carbohydrates that come in the package will turn into sugar. The bottom line, sugar-free food is not a free food, guys. So you can enjoy sugar-free food, sugar-free products, if they are low in carbohydrates and high in fiber. And the rule of thumb, if you're having as a snack less than 15, 20 grams of carbs is the rule. And if you're having as a whole meal, I don't think if there's any whole meal that is sugar-free, but the bottom line is you want to keep your carbohydrates to as low as possible and increase the fiber as much as possible. That's going to give you the best results. And they're not always the base tasting. So if I'm going to have really something sweet, I rather have a real sweet, maybe, you know, once in a blue moon, once a week, every other week, rather than, you know, trying to deceive myself with sugar-free food pretty much every day.